Hi everyone, trust you all are doing well. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up our plans. So as you can see, this one is the monthly and this one is the yearly and all that kind of stuff. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set this all up in our Stripe. So if we go to the overview, if you guys remember, we finished up in the previous episode right here. Right, so the first thing, in order to add Stripe, so let's say you add the home page right here, you just go to your products. And the first thing you're going to do is to just see this button right here. For future versions of Stripe, I think this might look a little bit different because they keep on changing the look. So just bear with us, okay? So just look for the products and just look for the add products. So just click on add product. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to call this one the monthly plan. Okay, so you can optional image upload. Okay, or you can add a description. That's all optional, right? There's additional options right here, and I'm not going to add those. I'm just going to add the name of monthly plan. Then the price, I'm going to use a standard pricing, and the first one for the month, we're just going to do $2, all right? That's going to be recurring, and that's going to be monthly, and then we add the price, okay? So that's it, okay? So we just add the monthly, okay? And then we save the product save and add more okay so let's just do that so it's saving it so now the next one we're going to add is we're going to add the yearly plan you can call it whatever you want all right so you can call it the super premium super discount all that kind of stuff it doesn't matter all right so we've got our yearly plan and we've got our optional description and there obviously the additional ones all right and this one is going to be twenty dollars all right, we're cutting, and this one we can set it to yearly. All right, so and then we save the product. Okay, so now we got if we go to our products, you will see we got a yearly plan and we got a monthly plan. Okay, so because this is what we're going to do when we set this all up. All right, so we got our yearly plan and monthly plan. So after you finish this, leave this window open. Right, so let's quickly set up our plan model. Right, so in Visual Studio Code, if we open our app, we see our models right here. We'll see we've got our plan model. So there's a couple of things we need to add in here. So the first one is the table. And that's going to equal to the plans. The plans table. And we're just going to do a protected uh, table. We're going to set that to equal to the self table. Next one is protected fillable. All right, so obviously we need to add a couple of things in here. Right, so the first one, this one will be the name, uh, slug, and stripe name. Okay, the other one will be the Stripe ID. Okay, and then you can obviously add descriptions or additional fields uh, that you might feel like you need. Okay, you can do that. And this one will be the price that we're going to save. And so the other field that we need here is the abbreviation. All right. Now, let me just show you all these fields basically in the browser. Right, so the first thing, it's the name, okay? And then obviously gonna have a slug for the name. And then this is basically our price. And this is our abbreviation. The other fields right there is just to correspond with basically our Stripe plan, the name of the plan, and the Stripe ID is this ID, which we're still going to copy, but just bear with us, okay? So we're still going to add that in a second. So let's go back. Right, so that's the protected fillable fields. The next field that we want to do is protected uh, cars. Okay, we're going to set this to... The thing is, what you want to do, especially when you work with money, uh, prices or anything related, try the best thing to do is to always store the value in your database in cents. Okay. So the reason for that is it makes it the calculations and all that kind of stuff a lot easier if you, when 
you store them in sends as if you store them as a float in the database okay so in this case what we're going to do is we're just going to call the price and we're just going to cast that to we're going to create a cast called price cast like this class we haven't created that class yet but we're going to do it in a second and the other one is we're just going to do a public function uh, get route key name if you guys remember from the previous episode and for those that are new a route key name by default uh, Laravel will use the ID as the default route key name but you can change that to be anything and then that you might need in my case I will use it as the I the slug of that thing okay so return this slug like this all right so that's it so let's quickly create this price car so in our cast So now, cars, what we can do is we're going to get a new file and we're going to call this one price cost.php. All right, so just that. Just copy everything basically in your previous cars that you created. Okay, I'm just going to speed up actually the workflow. I'm just going to change this to price cost. Now, in the set, what we're going to do is we're going to basically return the value. So when we set it in the database, okay, what we want to do is whatever price we put in, we just want to multiply that by 100. That's how we get to cents, okay. So when we get the attribute, we just want to set the basically divided by 100. Okay, so like $1 is basically 100 cents. And if you want to reconvert it back, so basically 100 cents equals to one dollar right so when we set it in the database we set it with the value times 100 when we get it from the database we get the value we divided by 100 okay so that's it let me just delete this okay so we so now we've got our price cost right there just copy everything from your title cost and put them in here and if you're new to the channel so basically you just create that file right there just put your namespace to that folder okay then we're going to use price cost that implements basically the cost attributes. And then we get a set in a get method. And that it basically needs to get all these methods and all these uh, arguments that you get right here. If you go to the cost attribute, you will see these two methods is basically the contract that you need to fulfill. And you just can basically copy all of them and put them in there. Okay, so the two methods. And then you just divide that. Okay, so that's it. Right, so now we've got our plan all set up. The next thing that we need to do is we need to basically do our migrations with these fields. So database migration. Let's go to our plans migration. This one right here. Okay, so let's quickly add those necessary fields in there. All right, so the first one that we have is uh, so we've got a table. This will be a string. Okay, this one is will be for the name. Right, and another one is a table. This is also for a string. And this is going to be for the name. Uh, no, sorry, for the slug. Right, let me just copy this down twice. Uh, this one will be, we got the slug. And this one will be the stripe name. Stripe. ID and the last one will be basically the abbreviation. Abbreviation like this. Let's just make sure one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, we obviously need the price in there as well. Right now, the price, what we can do in this case when you store it in the database. Right, so if we add the price in here. Right now, here. We're obviously not going to store the price as a string okay now someone will say all right we need to store it as a float okay now the problem with that is you can f go into a little bit calculation issues all right where it can miscalculate some values the other one is the decimal all right you can save it as a decimal but this is also not going to work for me all right so 
I just want to put it out there. The reason why I'm doing this is I want to store it as a big integer. All right. Now, the thing is that way I can store a huge sense value in the database and I can do my calculations easier. All right. So I know of a float and I know of the decimal. I just want to save it as a big integer. It's just going to work better for me when I store it as sense in the database and I can do my calculations from there. All right. So I just want to put it up there. All right. So now we've basically got our plan all set up. So what I'm going to do in the next one, this one is getting a bit too long. All right. So what I will do in the next one is I will create just a plan seeder where we can see the database accordingly. All right. So that's it for me, guys. And if you like the video, please give it a like. See you in the next one. Adios.